Hello and welcome to another Tyco video. In yesterday's presentation, I talked a little bit about the concept of plate solving. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering a topic that is somewhat related to that. Uh, this is the topic of image registration, also commonly known as alignment. And the reason I say it is somewhat related is that the newest version of Tyco features a new mode of alignment called WCS Match. This stands for World Coordinate System Match. So most of you are already familiar with the concept of star match, which is where it's going to extract stars from each image and identify common features from one image to the next in order to do the alignment. Well, WCS match is going to make use of a plate solution that has been attached uh, to each image. So that's where the plate solver, if you specify to have it solve all of the images in the data set, you can now make use of this new WCS match mode of alignment. Now there's also a third, if you will, mode of alignment here called drizzle. And the reason I say it's another mode of alignment is because it actually performs alignment and stacking essentially at the same time. And what that does for you is it saves a resampling step. Now for most people, they probably, for all practical purposes, would not notice this resampling, especially if they have adequate uh, sampling of the stars, the plate scale is sufficient and so forth, but it can be a nice feature to have. So the question is, which mode of alignment would you want to use? Okay, so this is the alignment window here. And as you can see, the very first setting that pertains to alignment is the interpolation setting. So here you've got three different options to choose from, bilinear, bicubic, and Lanchos 3. Typically you would lean towards bilinear or bicubic if you have small stars that are present in the image. Otherwise, uh, you would lean towards Lancers 3 because it is better at preserving detail. So to give an example here, these are three different images, all of the same stars. The only difference between them is the interpolation uh, setting. So here you've got bilinear, bicubic, and Lancers 3. And the plate scale here is a bit undersampled at 6.42 arc seconds per pixel. So you can see that these are smaller stars. And as a result, in that scenario, you would lean towards either bilinear or bicubic. And just looking at this, again, looking at the artifacts that are generated off of this star, I would lean towards bilinear. So again, the interpolation you choose is somewhat dependent upon the types of images you are uh, creating and what uh, your, your subject is, the plate scale you're operating at, and so forth. So you can't really just say always use this interpolation or always use that. As another example, here is another set of images. Plate scale is 2.74, so it's a little bit better sampled. And in this scenario, I would actually lean towards Lanchos 3 uh, because the bilinear, I don't know if you can see it here in the video, but uh, basically you've got a nice sharp detail here in the center, but then around uh, as you go out from the center, it looks a little bit more blurry. And so it's not preserving the sharp detail as well as Lanchos 3, which instead offers a nice uniform presentation and contrast and clarity uh, throughout the image. Now, before I start the demonstration, I wanted to talk a little bit about the different modes of alignment. I covered these briefly at the introduction. So there are three of them, star match, WCS match, and the one that's not visible in the alignment window here is drizzle. And that is because it is essentially its own self-contained module. And as a result, I will be talking about that in more detail later on. But for now, uh, the first two, star match and WCS match, uh, you would choose star match if you are not able to plate solve all of the images in the data set, or maybe you are, but you, would, you are favoring speed uh, of uh, processing time, so you do not want the additional overhead of having to plate solve all of the images. And a third reason you might choose star match is that your images have a great deal of distortion. Uh, such that it cannot be completely accounted for in the third order SIP polynomial of the plate solution. So those might be three different reasons why you would choose star match. Now WCS match, on the other hand, you might choose that if the star match is failing, so it can be a nice alternative. Uh, you might also choose it just because it can give somewhat consistent behavior uh, when it does come to distortion. So that, that can be one reason to favor it uh, because that polynomial that accounts for distortion is not using what's called thin plate splines. 
and that is its own advanced topic of discussion. If you want to read more about that, you can, but these two different modes of alignment handle distortion differently. So that might be another reason to favor it if you have a little bit of distortion that uh, you, you want to be accounted for in a consistent manner. So either way, it's nice to have options. So this newest version of Tycho, uh, again, the old version, you only had star match. Well, now the newest version, you have uh, this WCS match, world coordinate system match uh, option available as well. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with a demonstration. Okay, so for this demonstration, I'm going to start off with an example that shows the difference between using distortion correction and not using distortion correction, uh, because I haven't really talked a whole lot about distortion correction yet, but it is important, especially if you are working with moving objects, uh, because some of you might enable distortion correction thinking, you know, hey, why not go ahead and use it? But there can be a potential downside to it, again, especially if you have a moving object uh, that you are working with. Now, it depends too, because Again, if you're using star match, that uses its own type of distortion correction that is different uh, from the one used by the WCS match mode of operation. So to get started, I have 60 images here. They're all 4096 by 4096 pixels in size. And as you can see, as I animate the frames, uh, they've not yet been aligned. Uh, there is also a meridian flip uh, that took place during the sequence. So you can see that. Again, right here, it has occurred. And this makes it great for this example. So now when I do the alignment, and so what I'm going to do here is star match without a, a distortion correction, uh, you can see that indeed uh, the result is suboptimal uh, when we do not apply uh, distortion correction for these particular images uh, because they were captured with a somewhat short focal length instrument and a somewhat wide field. So that would be a scenario in which you would typically want to use uh, distortion correction. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a moment here to uh, finish the alignment. Again, 60 images, lots of stars, very star dense. So it can take a little bit longer than otherwise. So now it has finished alignment and now we can go ahead and reload uh, these images uh, for the viewing. So again, this is star match mode without distortion correction. So again, this should be a suboptimal, a less than perfect result because there is distortion. So here I'm animating the frames and you can see this actually looks okay, except uh, for the fact that if you go into the corners here, you can really start to see uh, the effect of that distortion. It's just not quite able to account for it and it, you get a suboptimal result uh, consequently. So uh, with that in mind, uh, I'm going to, uh, let's just take a, one more look at that. So again, yeah, the distortion, you can see the movement uh, here. It, it is somewhat subtle, but it, it nevertheless it is there, especially when the meridian flip takes place. And especially in this corner here, you, you see all kinds of movement. Uh, especially again when that meridian flip occurs. So let's try it once more, uh, this time star match with distortion correction. So I enable this checkbox. So again, I, what I'm pointing out here is that this would be a scenario in which you would want to use distortion correction. But after this example, I'm going to show a, an example in which you would probably not want to use distortion correction because it contains a moving object at least if you're using star match mode. So this might be one example where if you have that moving object and you want the distortion correction applied, you might actually want to use the WCS match mode of alignment because unlike star match, which uses what I mentioned earlier, the concept of thin plate splines to account for distortion, WCS match is going to use a polynomial across the image. So let's go ahead and give it a moment here to finish up. Again, this is with distortion, so it takes a little bit longer uh, to apply that. So it's saving image, and now we can view the result. So let's go ahead and give it a moment to load. And now when I animate the frames, uh, the idea is that uh, we should not have that kind of um, 
obvious motion, uh, especially uh, with the uh, meridian flip that took place. So here it looks pretty stable, uh, even as we go through the sequence and even as we ha encounter that meridian flip, there is a pretty consistent stationary set of stars. So this is what we would want uh, for our image. So with that, again, you can see the need to do uh, distortion correction for this example. So now let's take a look at an example where you might not want to use uh, distortion correction. But actually, before I do that, uh, let's take a look and see how this would actually compare with WCS match uh, mode of alignment. Okay, so this is that exact same 60 images prior to alignment. So what I'm going to do is choose plate solve, and I'm going to say that it should solve all of the images. So I uncheck the box, solve only the reference, and again, this will force it to solve all of the images in the data set. And again, this will allow me to choose the WCS match mode of alignment. So the question is, is that method of alignment capable of handling uh, this type of distortion? So let's go ahead and give it a moment here. It has already found the solution for the reference image, and now it has to do the batch solve for all of the other images. So here it has extracted sources. Again, very star dense field large size images so it can take a little bit longer uh, but now it has already finished plate solving all of them so again it can be very efficient and in fact it took less time to do that than it took to do the alignment so let's go ahead and now do alignment with WCS match so when I say it took less time to do that than alignment I refer to the uh, previous alignment it here it took um, uh, well four seconds to do the batch solve after it had, had extracted uh, the stars. So in any case, uh, let's try now this WCS match mode since we have all of the images plate solved. So I click OK and as you see it has to load the images and it's of course very quick. Uh, it took two seconds to do uh, the WCS alignment uh, again because it already knows the transformation to apply. So the big question now is when I load these images in for viewing has that distortion been accounted for with the WCS match uh, alignment mode? So I go to animate, and as you can see here, of course there's very little distortion here in the center. So now we go to the corner, and let's see what that looks like. So again, this actually looks pretty good uh, with the animation. In fact, I'll go ahead and speed that up a bit more. And you can see there might be just a very small amount. I can see it here, just a very subtle amount uh, but it is, again, that's with the meridian flip having taken place. So I can see, again, it is somewhat subtle, but it is there. So uh, if you have very highly distorted images, that might be, again, one scenario where you might favor the star match mode of operation. So in fact, I can see it here, if I go even more to the extreme corner and I zoom in, you can see just a slight pixel offset here. So, and that's as a result of that distortion, uh, extreme distortion here in the corner. So WCS match mode is certainly better than star match without distortion in this scenario, but uh, it's not able to quite compensate for all of it uh, with that polynomial correction. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look now at one example where you probably would not want to use uh, distortion correction uh, with the star match uh, uh, approach. Okay, so for this final example, I have 17 images of asteroid Ivar. Uh, this is a numbered asteroid 1627. And what you'll notice is that, again, to start off with, these images are not yet aligned. So you can see that uh, motion from one frame to the next. Uh, so what we need to go ahead and do is perform alignment. So if I choose action, align, and if I do star match with distortion correction, I'm going to show what effect that can have on the asteroid because the thin plate spline method of accounting for distortion can actually confuse the asteroid for a, if you will, displaced star and try to apply distortion correction to the asteroid. And it's a very subtle effect. You probably wouldn't notice it if you didn't know to look for it. 
but here is the result of that alignment. So it looks pretty convincing enough. If we look at the, the stars, they appear to have nice stationary uh, positioning from one, from one frame to the next, which is what we want. And of course, the asteroid itself has that recognizable motion. So it looks pretty good. And the only reason that it has a, uh, a, a jump in, in, in position is due to a, a delay. There is a delta time. Uh, you can see here it's not consistent delta time from one image to the next. So uh, that is why we have that uh, jump. But that is not what I'm talking about with the distortion correction necessarily. It's actually quite a lot more subtle than that. So if I go ahead and load up another instance of Tycho here, and I will go ahead and perform that exact same alignment, but this time without distortion correction, then you will be able to take uh, a note and see uh, the difference. So the way to do that is I can do a stack of the images. So here you can see the asteroid here. And I'm going to do the same thing with the previous result with the distortion correction. So I zoom in a little bit here and uh, I go ahead and center. I need to do that for the, this image here. So what you'll notice is that if I blink the two results, uh, you can see on this frame here that the, um, the footprint of the asteroid is just ever so slightly off. So I zoom in a little bit more here and here. And so with the distortion correction, this is where it has been uh, positioned and without it is here. So this could have a potential impact if you are measuring astrometry of an asteroid. So that is why I say if you're measuring a moving object, you may not want to use uh, distortion correction in that scenario uh, because uh, it, the distortion correction algorithm, at least as used by the star match mode, again, it makes use of thin plate spline method, which you can read about in more detail. It could confuse the asteroid as a star that has been displaced and try to correct for that displacement. Uh, because it sees that there is motion and so forth. Now, it's more pronounced that distortion correction error when you simply have fewer um, stars in your image. Because, again, the way it works is it's trying to determine, uh, again, from one frame to the next, that uh, displacement that needs to be corrected. And if you have very few samples uh, to work with, in other words, very few stars, then the likelihood that it's going to pick up that asteroid as a sample is increased. So that's about it for this video. I want to thank you for watching and see you next time.